I can tell. I can tell by what what people's reactions were if if they if they watched the whole entire interview. Because if you watched the whole entire interview, your energy would not be the same. Big Dash knows what? Hello and welcome to Big Dash Knows. Big Dash Knows what? New York Giants football. Let's go. You see the thumbnail. Kayvon Thibodeau. The interview that has everybody running around thinking they know something. Thinking they know something. Everybody is reading between the lines. Everybody. And guess what? A lot of these people didn't even take the time to watch the whole video. They saw the clips and they ran with the clips. And for two days, for two days, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make a video about it. So, you know, I sat down, I watched the entire interview. Now, the podcast is a 7 p.m. us uh, what? 7 p.m. podcast, something, something like that. It's, it's 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 Carmelo Anthony and 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 the other dude from um I think it's Miro or Desus. I I'm sorry, I apologize. The whole thing is like over two hours long. There was it, it was probably a 45 minute interview where, where Kayvon Thibodeau was actually, you know, talking, maybe, you know, like 45 minutes of that two hours, maybe, maybe, maybe an hour. But the whole point is I can tell by the way people are, are tweeting comments and stuff. They didn't watch the whole video. They didn't they didn't watch the whole interview, because if you did, he explained them. He said what he said. He explained uh, why he said what he said. And if you were watching that interview from the beginning, you understood what the temperature in the room was and that's the difference a lot of people don't understand what the like what's going on around you affects what's going on or what you're saying and the temperature in that room it was very comfortable shout out to carmelo and that's my first time he, i didn't even know he had a podcast this is my first time even seeing this podcast instant subscriber and i'm just sitting here like okay they, they went into his background a little bit um, Carmelo talked about, you know, how mature he he is, Kayvon is for his age. Talking about he don't get this cop this type of conversation from other 23 year olds, and he and he's been a lot been around a lot of professional 23 year olds as far as sports players. And he was like, he don't, you know, he doesn't get that same type of energy and vibe from these other guys. And that's true. And Kayvon Thibodeau explained, you know, why he is the way he is, why he sees this thing as a business, and why he knows at the end of the day, people can tell you that they love you. But at the end of the day, it's all about the money and what you can do for them and how long you can do that for them people. And, and one of the quotes he said is like, if you don't like the way something is going, own it. Something like that. And you know me, I got I got the handy dandy notebook. I got the handy dandy notebook. Yeah, the quote was, if you don't like what's, what's being done, own it. That's how I know people don't watch. People don't watch the whole interview. People just run off of emotions and they run off of you know what's hot right now so i said let me take let me take some time to see what's going on and, and get some perspective so he dropped a lot of jewels man it like the part about daniel jones and saquon barkley's contract was so small was it in, in the big scheme of things it wasn't even a focal point it wasn't even a real focal point for the interview that's another reason why i know a lot of people didn't watch this this interview for in fully there was more jewels about coaching and the players and practice and how people felt towards the end of the season you know uh the pressure that he puts on himself how he prepares it was more it was more stuff about that than and and i was impressed with than just that short snippet that that everybody ran with and it's crazy to me because Kayvon thibodeau fifth pick in the draft rookie season wasn't quite what people expected it to be second season better numbers but guess what well more sacks pressure rate went down but the whole point is he had a productive season and if the new york giants won more games you know it would have been i guess it would have been more of a light you know that would that, that shine on his accomplishment for the season but no because the team is so bad we sweep we sweep the 11 and a half sacks under underneath the rug and like a, you you get and it, it's just crazy to me because I'm, I'm gonna go to some of these notes, man. Where he was, you know, he, he 
and talk about his preparation and stuff like that. And, and, and knowing when you get to the league, it's about what you can do. And, and his ultimate goal, his ultimate goal is, is, is to sack the quarterback and win Super Bowls. He said that. He said that. Another thing that I like that he said is that, you know, he don't, uh, what was it? He doesn't, he's not a fan of anybody. You know, he doesn't have respect for any team because he plays football. Now, obviously, he respects the game. He respects players, this, that, and that. But you know what the mindset is. So if you know what the mindset is, you can understand what a person is talking about. He's saying, yeah, I respect these players, but I play just like these guys play. I got to earn this money just like these guys earn this money. So that's where the admiration leaves. I got a job to do. Like some people don't, some people just look past stuff like that. And it's crazy to me. Going through, going through these shows some more. Like, he was talking about how you can only control what's on, you know, what he can do on his side when he's talking about on defense. And he talked about how they, how they went in to prepare for the Baltimore Ravens. And meanwhile, the New York Giants are the only NFC team, period, to ever beat Lamar Jackson. As long as Lamar Jackson has been playing, we're the only NFC team, not the NFC East team, the NFC NFC team to beat the Baltimore Ravens. And he was the main point of that with the strip sack. Like, come on, man. What are we talking about here? Competitiveness. What we're looking at and what we're looking at is, is a young, intelligent player that by his own admission, teeters the line. He's going to, he's going to, you know, he, he does what he's told to do, but he also asks the right questions when they needed to be asked. And some people just don't like that. This shit reminds me of the whole, you know, shut up and dribble, just play. You know, why are you talking? The man can talk. He can talk. You can't tell somebody not, not he's in the building. He's on the field with these players. He's dealing with these coaches. He told you he didn't have any issues with the coaches. Uh, you know, alluded to that respect for the coaches now we already know for a fact that he didn't like dropping back Kayvon he all every time you hear Kayvon Thibodeau talk he's talking about hunting the quarterback beating that beating the tackles you know whether it's a bull rush whether it's getting around them speed whatever he's talking about hunting quarterbacks getting to the quarterback so you already know he doesn't like dropping dropping back in coverage and I don't know any New York Giants fan that also likes Kayvon Thibodeau dropping back in coverage but again I got to put my notebook down, man, and just talk to y'all for a second, man. Why do we do this? Why? And that's and that's for both sides. Again, and I'm going I'm going to go back to what the big deal with the big deal was cuz there was a lot of gems. I, if you haven't watched the entire video, go back and watch the entire video. I trust me, the Saquon uh uh Daniel Jones money discussion is such a small part. Not they didn't even make it a big deal in the interview. But just go back and watch it. But why do we do this, right? So automatically, and this is, like I said, for both sides. Now, automatically, you're saying, oh, I, I knew it was right. Saquon should have got paid, this, that, and the third. This, why didn't Saquon get his money? Yeah. Why didn't Saquon get his money? Ask yourself that question. Why didn't Saquon get his money? He was off a deal. Why didn't he get his money? And when it comes to Daniel Jones, you heard what he said. You know, the players in the locker room know. Who, who, who those guys are now you can you can say and you can allude that yo he's saying that daniel jones shouldn't have got paid that's not what he said that's not what he said that's what you wanted him to say and that's what you heard but that's not what he said that's not what he said and no matter here I'm, I'm on the same side as i'm trying to get rid of jones i want to draft a quarterback i want to draft a quarterback and and then buddy was talking about if, if if he was a gm he would draft offensive linemen no no not not in the first round no no, there's some quality. I don't even want to talk draft talk. This is a Kayvon Thibodeau um, video. But at the end of the day, we got to stop doing this as Giants fans, man. We got to stop jumping to conclusions, especially when you didn't watch the entire interview. And that goes for the that goes for sports media, the the freaking uh, uh, the beat writers. I seen all the comments going out for two days. I waited for two days to see, you know, what people were going to say. What I didn't do was watch other videos of people talking about it. Because I didn't want to get influenced about you know on this situation. I watched, I mean, I read the tweets. I saw some I saw some articles, but I didn't watch the content creators because I could tell by some of the titles that ain't no way. Ain't no way these, you know, ain't no way they watched the whole the whole video. And then, you know, it is what it is with that. But again, why are we doing this? He's a bright spot for the New York Giants. Um 
Is he a vocal leader? Maybe not yet, but I can see where he can become a vocal leader. As long as you got the respect of the guys in, in the locker room, you can be a leader. And I think that he's working towards that. Um, he is one of the better players on the, on the, on the roster, that's for sure. So if you if if you're looking to for somebody to talk, he's definitely one of those guys that you should look to that that could talk because none of these other guys are talking. I'm not seeing Dexter Lawrence talking. Xavier McKinney had the little spat, you know, in season, but he's in the contract year, so he's not going to say nothing. Dexter Lawrence just got paid. Andrew Thomas just got paid. Daniel Jones can't say anything right now, so he's the only guy that's talking. And instead of listening to what the man is saying, we want to jump to conclusions and take. A, a 20 a 20 second or even maybe a 45 second part of the, of, of the entire interview and run with that and it's disgusting it's disgusting point blank and again anybody that want to talk let me know how you feel in the comments down below do you think that Kayvon Thibodeau did too much you see my thumbnail in the thumbnail I said did he say too much or just enough and for me I think he said just enough period period he gave you enough to to to, to think about and, uh, he, I, and I guess he gave people enough to assume stuff, too. Um, but again, what what, do you, what are we asking for here? It was a terrible season. You had one of our best players in an interview tell his truth, tell you where he was coming from and why he said what he was saying and how the NFL is a business and how at the end of the day is what have you done for me lately? And that's what it is. From the coaches to the GMs to the to, to the players, it's all it's all of what have you done for me lately? And as quick as people love you, they can get rid of you. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And that's what it is, a real truth. And that's what Kayvon Thibodeau shared. And just that go back and watch the video. That's all I got to say. Go back and watch the interview. That's all I got to say about it. Real recognized, real man. That man did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. He didn't even say a lot. And, and the things that he did say, fans have been saying it for months, almost a year. They've been saying it for a long time. And when a player says it, all of a sudden, whatever, whatever. But I want to thank everybody for vibing with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And from one Giants fan to another, this is Big Dash Knows, Big Blue Nation. Let's go.